A single Dutch company controls the most powerful machines on earth. Each one costs $350 million, weighs 180 tons, and requires 40 shipping containers just to transport. Only about 50 of these machines are built each year globally, and without them, you cannot make the most advanced computer chips that power everything from your smartphone to artificial intelligence. That company is ASML, and for decades, their monopoly seemed absolutely unbreakable. But in September 2023, something shocked the entire tech industry. Huawei released the Mate 60 Pro smartphone powered by a 7 nanometer chip made entirely in China by SMIC. Industry experts had declared this impossible without ASML's advanced machines. Yet here it was, running 5G speeds that exceeded top-tier phones, selling out within minutes across China. Tech Insights, the authoritative semiconductor research firm, tore down the phone and confirmed what seemed impossible. The Kirin 9000's processor inside measured 107 square millimeters and featured genuine 7 nanometers manufacturing using SMIC N Plus 2 process. This wasn't some crude workaround. This was a legitimate technological breakthrough that defied Western sanctions designed to cripple China's chip industry for at least a decade. But the Mate 60 Pro was just the beginning. Behind closed doors, something far more dramatic was unfolding. Reports emerged in early 2025 that China was testing its own extreme ultraviolet lithography machine at Huawei's Dingguan facility. Tryout production was reportedly scheduled for the third quarter of 2025, with mass manufacturing targeted for 2026. If successful, this would shatter ASML's 100% monopoly on the most critical technology in the semiconductor industry. The machine uses an entirely different approach called laser-induced discharge plasma, or LDP, compared to ASML's laser-produced plasma method. Instead of firing high-energy lasers at tin droplets requiring complex control systems, the Chinese system vaporizes tin between electrodes and converts it to plasma through high-voltage discharge. This generates the crucial 13.5 nanometer wavelength EUV light needed for advanced chip manufacturing. Industry insiders claim this approach offers a simpler architecture, smaller footprint, better energy efficiency, and potentially 30 to 50 percent lower production costs. So how did we get here? The story starts in 2019 when the United States convinced the Netherlands to block ASML from selling its most advanced EUV machines to China. Then in January 2024, the Dutch government partially revoked export licenses for ASML's NXT, 2050i and NXT, 2100i deep ultraviolet lithography systems. These models are among the most advanced EUV machines available widely used for 28 nanometers, 14 nanometers, 10 nanometers, and 7 nanometers process nodes. By September 2023, the Netherlands further expanded restrictions, and ASML was forced to cut off software updates, technical support, and spare parts for existing machines already operating in Chinese facilities. The message from Washington was clear. China would be permanently locked out of advanced semiconductor manufacturing but Western strategists made a catastrophic miscalculation. They assumed China lacked the technical capability and would need 10 to 15 years to catch up. What they didn't account for was China's willingness to spend whatever it takes. Between 2022 and 2024, China funneled over $75 billion into domestic semiconductor development through state banks, sovereign wealth funds, and strategic tax incentives. China's semiconductor investment jumped from $19 billion in 2014 to $41 billion in 2023. More recently, China committed 37 billion euros, approximately $40 billion, specifically for EUV lithography development alone. The country didn't just throw money at the problem. More than 50,000 of China's brightest engineers were reassigned from companies like Huawei and SMIC to classified research facilities. These weren't ordinary technicians. They were hand-picked specialists in lithography, process integration, and yield optimization. Satellite imagery revealed dozens of massive new semiconductor facilities rising from the ground in Shanghai's Lingang District and Shenzhen's Longhua Zone. China also launched an aggressive international talent recruitment drive, pulling semiconductor experts from Singapore, South Korea, 
and even retired Japanese lithography specialists. Salaries tripled overnight, and stock options in Chinese semiconductor companies became the new gold rush. The technical breakthrough came from multiple angles. Dr. Liu Xiaoming, leading a team of 200 researchers at the Institute of Microelectronics, spent three years perfecting what insiders called computational lithography on steroids. By combining multiple exposures of older DUV equipment with AI-driven pattern correction algorithms, his team achieved resolution that theoretically shouldn't have been possible without EUV. In March 2025, an unknown Shenzhen company called Sikar unveiled a domestic immersion lithography system capable of patterning features below 7 nanometers. They didn't just show slides and promises. They demonstrated live wafer processing with electron microscope images and yield data that made Western engineers question everything they thought they knew. Days later, Huawei filed a patent in 2022 for a new type of EUV light source. Shanghai Microelectronics Equipment or SME, China's leading lithography manufacturer, filed a 2023 patent titled Extreme Ultraviolet Radiation Generators and Lithography Equipment. The Harbin Institute collaborated with the Shanghai Institute of Optics and Fine Mechanics in January 2024 to enhance EUV light focusing and control. By June 2025, SMIC was producing 5 nanometer chips using entirely domestic equipment. Yes, the yield rates were lower than TSMC's cutting-edge processes, around 60% compared to TSMC's 85%. But for Beijing, that was acceptable. What mattered was capability, not perfection. The financial markets responded with brutal efficiency. ASML stock plummeted 31% in the six months following the export restrictions. The company lost over $50 billion in market capitalization in a single day in October 2024 when it announced China sales would drop from 49% of revenue in Q2 2024 to just 20% in 2025. Meanwhile, Chinese semiconductor stocks soared to record highs. China's local chip toolmaker's market share rose to 11.3% in 2024, up from just 5.1% in 2020. The prototype system reportedly being tested at Huawei's facility, believed to be named Hyperion 1, features a 50-watt terbium fiber laser, molybdenum silicon multilayer mirrors with 65% reflectivity, and a RISC-V-based plasma control system. Current output is limited to around 10 wafers per hour, but a follow-up model, Hyperion 2, expected by 2026, aims to reach 150 watts of power and support commercial-scale production. For comparison, ASML's machines require at least 250 watts for commercial viability, but China's alternative approach may compensate through different architectural advantages. The implications are staggering. If China successfully commercializes LDP-based EUV lithography by 2025 or 2026, it would become the only nation outside the Netherlands to achieve EUV capabilities. ASML's latest high-end EUV tool costs around $380 million, and Chinese versions could potentially undercut this by 30 to 50 percent while still generating massive profits. This isn't just about semiconductors. This is about a fundamental shift in global power dynamics. For 50 years, the West controlled the most critical technology on Earth. That era is ending. ASML's monopoly isn't just threatened. If China succeeds, it's over. The semiconductor war has entered a new phase, and the only certainty is that the world of technology will never be the same. In January 2025, $15 billion worth of the world's most advanced semiconductor equipment across China suddenly went dark. These weren't ordinary machines. Each one cost more than $350 million, and they represented the absolute pinnacle of chip manufacturing technology. Without any warning, their software froze, their precision mechanisms locked up, and their connection to Dutch headquarters disappeared. This wasn't some random technical glitch. This was the opening move in what would become the biggest technological rebellion the semiconductor industry has ever witnessed. The company at the center of this crisis is ASML, a Dutch giant that holds a complete monopoly on extreme ultraviolet lithography machines.
These are the only tools on Earth capable of making the most advanced computer chip. To understand how critical these machines are, consider this. Every smartphone, every laptop, every AI system you use today depends on chips made by ASML equipment. There is no alternative, no backup plan, no second source. For decades, ESML was the gatekeeper to advanced technology, and everyone played by their rules. But on January 15th, under intense pressure from the United States, the Dutch government revoked ESML's export licenses for deep ultraviolet lithography systems heading to China. Then came the devastating blow. All software updates, technical support, and spare parts for existing machines already operating in Chinese factories were suspended indefinitely. China had imported between $2.6 and $6 billion worth of ASML equipment in 2023 alone. Without access to these systems, conventional wisdom suggested China would be permanently stuck at 28 nanometer technology while the rest of the world raced toward 3 nanometers and beyond. Here's where the story takes a shocking turn. While Western analysts confidently predicted doom for Chinese semiconductors, something extraordinary was happening behind closed doors. China had been preparing for this exact moment since 2022 when the first American sanctions targeted their access to extreme ultraviolet scanners. Between 2022 and 2024, China quietly channeled over $75 billion into domestic semiconductor development through sovereign wealth funds, state banks, and strategic tax incentive. More than 50,000 of China's brightest engineers were secretly reassigned from companies like Huawei and SMIC to classified research facilities. These weren't ordinary technicians. They were hand-selected experts in lithography, process integration, and yield optimization. Then in March 2025, an unknown Shenzhen company called Sikar unveiled something the world deemed impossible. A domestic immersion lithography system capable of patterning features below 7 nanometers. This wasn't just slides and promises. They demonstrated live wafer processing, showed electron microscope images of successful patterns, and presented yield data that made Western engineers question everything they thought they knew about lithography limit. The technology behind this breakthrough is called laser-induced discharge plasma. Unlike ESML's massive machines that use laser-produced plasma, Sikari's system vaporizes tin between electrodes, zaps it with high voltage, and creates plasma that emits the precise wavelength of extreme ultraviolet light needed to etch circuits just 3 nanometers wide. Days after Sikari's announcement, Huawei dropped its own bombshell. The Mate 60 Pro smartphone powered by a 7 nanometer Kirin chip, manufactured entirely with legacy equipment and advanced multi-patterning technique. No extreme ultraviolet. No ESML. No Western technology. Just Chinese innovation pushed to its absolute limit. This single device proved that China had successfully built a path to advanced semiconductor nodes without depending on anyone else. The financial markets reacted with immediate violence. YesML's stock plummeted 31% in six months. TSMC, the Taiwanese chip giant, lost $180 billion in market capitalization as investors grappled with the loss of their largest growth market. Meanwhile, Chinese semiconductor stocks soared to unprecedented heights, creating a new generation of technology billionaires overnight. Over 3,000 highly skilled ESML technicians in China found themselves reassigned or unemployed as service centers stood abandoned. But for every Western technician who departed, 10 Chinese engineers stepped forward. China wasn't finished. In a calculated move that sent shockwaves through global markets, Beijing announced sweeping restrictions on rare earth exports. The numbers tell a sobering story. China controls 90% of global rare earth processing, and these precious elements are essential for precision polishing of chip wafers, creation of specialized etching chemicals, and manufacturing of critical components in lithography machines. YesML's crisis deepened when internal analysis revealed that their advanced optical systems relied heavily on Chinese-processed neodymium and terbium. 
The company's stock, already battered, plunged another 22% on this news. The human impact of this technological war extended far beyond semiconductor factories. Consider Apple, the world's most valuable company. Nine out of every ten Apple products worldwide roll off assembly lines in China. The company depends on over 2,400 critical components sourced exclusively from Chinese suppliers. When the Pentagon launched an investigation into BOE technology, one of Apple's crucial display manufacturers, $200 billion in market value evaporated in just six hours of trading. Apple's market share in China's premium smartphone segment collapsed from 70% to 47% in just two years as Huawei came roaring back despite American sanctions. The implications of China's semiconductor breakthrough extend far beyond corporate balance sheet. Professor Wei Chang of Beijing's Institute of Semiconductor Research explains that if Huawei succeeds with its planned trial production in the third quarter of 2025 and moves to mass production in 2026 as scheduled, it could flood the market with homegrown 3 nanometer chip. This would effectively shatter the Western monopoly on advanced semiconductor technology and potentially render United States sanctions meaningless. The irony of this situation hasn't been lost on industry observers. The very sanctions intended to contain China's technological advancement may have instead accelerated it. By cutting off access to Western technology, the United States and its allies effectively forced China to innovate in ways they might never have attempted otherwise. As recently as December 2024, YesML's chief executive confidently claimed China was still 10 to 15 years behind in extreme ultraviolet technology. That timeline has now completely collapsed. The semiconductor world now faces an uncomfortable reality. The comfortable assumptions about globalized supply chains and technological interdependence are crumbling. In their place, a new order is emerging where control over critical materials means control over the future of technology itself. The question isn't just who will win this technological war. It's whether the global technology industry can survive intact as we witness the birth of parallel technology universes that may never reconnect. China. 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 October 2025. A research team at Peking University published something in Nature Electronics that made every chip engineer in Silicon Valley stop and stare at their screens in disbelief. They built an analog computing chip using resistive random access memory that processes calculations 1,000 times faster than NVIDIA's H100 GPU while consuming 100 times less power. And here's the kicker. They built it using older 7 nanometer manufacturing technology that the United States never bothered to sanction because everyone assumed it was too primitive to matter. Jensen Huang saw this coming. At the Financial Times AI Summit in London just weeks ago, the CEO of Nvidia stood on stage and said something nobody expected to hear from the man who built a $5 trillion empire selling GPUs to the world. He said China is going to win the AI race. Not might win. Will win. When the person who literally powers almost every major AI model today tells you his own technology is approaching obsolescence, you need to pay attention. Let me explain what just happened because this changes everything. For the past hundred years, we've been doing computing wrong. Every computer you've ever used, every smartphone, every